Robbie here from CFSB Nutrition at CrossFit South Bend. Today we're going to talk about how all carbs are not created equal. And I will most likely be doing a series about this, talking about things like fiber versus sugar and carbs, and glucose versus fructose. But you hear it a lot today is where carbs are just lumped all together and people you know, automatically assume that they're all bad, when the truth is there's a lot of nuance and variation depending on which carbs you're talking about. So today in particular, we are going to talk about the hierarchy of carbs. We're gonna talk about which carbs tend to be the best overall and which carbs tend to be the least conducive to health. Now, I wanna emphasize up front that what I'm talking about here is specifically health. We're not talking about macros per se, we're not talking about sports performance. Um, you know, these things can be conducive to that too, but we're specifically talking about which are the healthiest uh, forms of carbs, the ones that tend to have the most nutrients, uh, keep your blood sugar stable that um, tend to create a healthy psychological relationship with food rather than an addictive one that promote digestive health and that are non-inflammatory. So we're talking about health specifically. So let's talk about the best ones first. So the best ones by far are going to be your non-starchy vegetables. So anytime someone says eat your vegetables, typically they're talking about these non-starchy vegetables, things like kale, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, uh, spinach, um, mushrooms, things of that nature. So those are all great. They contain very few calories, uh, lots of nutrients, and very little in the way of actual carbohydrates, uh, although they are primarily carbohydrates uh, in terms of their macronutrients. Denser vegetables. So these aren't quite potatoes and sweet potatoes and, um, you know, butternut squash, but they're also not kale and broccoli either. So Things like um, beets, uh, carrots, parsnips, turnips, um, some of the less dense squash, uh, things maybe like a spaghetti squash. Um, so a little bit denser vegetables, so you're gonna have a little bit more in the way of sugar, obviously, in your beets and your carrots, but a whole lot of antioxidants and fiber and water and other things. Um, so a little bit more carb dense, but still very, very healthy for you. Uh, then your starchy tubers and others. So these are going to be things like white potatoes, sweet potatoes. I put and others because there are certain other ones that aren't necessarily vegetables per se, something like a plantain, um, cassava, yucca, taro, other roots and, and tubers that would fit in here that um, maybe, you heard of, maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't, but those would certainly fit in there as well where they're primarily glucose, uh, very little in the way of um, sugar, and they do contain some healthy nutrients. Uh, you know, a potato is a really good example. A potato is predominantly carbohydrate, but it has very little in the way of any sugar, right? So it's, it, it, it has almost no sugar to, to speak of. So there's a big difference between that and, you know, obviously a Gatorade or, you know, a piece of candy or something like that. And then fruits, things like apples, blueberries, uh, pomegranates, pears, so on and so forth. So by and large, things that are more glucose-based, like your starchy tubers, your potatoes, sweet potatoes, those are going to be a little bit better for you, more able to be utilized by the muscles and the brain. Things that are primarily fructose, like the fruits, primarily sugar, um, they still have beneficial nutrients in them, but you are going to want to... Um, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that these are more of like a condiment or finisher to a meal rather than the main, the main thing. Okay, so that is uh, it for the best in terms of the carbohydrates. Uh, let's talk quickly about the um, kind of middle of the road carbohydrates. So these are gonna be things like your gluten-free grains, so rice, corn, um, oats to a certain extent, things like that. Your pseudo greens, uh, your, your quinoa, your buckwheat, your amaranth, things that um, are not fully botanically grains, but they're, they're kind of similar. Um, these two are again gonna be the best uh, of the bunch because they are more glucose rather than fructose. And you're gonna want more of your carbohydrates to come from things that have glucose and fiber rather than things that are primarily uh, sweet or sugar. Natural sweeteners, things like honey, honey
honey, stevia, maple syrup, blackstrap molasses, uh, things of that nature. While they are not, you know, um, purely healthy, I wouldn't say, they aren't the same as table sugar or sucralose either. So they kind of fit in that middle range. And then certain liquid drinks. So in general, liquid food isn't gonna be doing most people health favors. There are obviously certain exceptions to this rule, but generally speaking, it's not gonna be doing you many favors, but especially so when we're talking about liquid carbohydrates, um, liquid sugar. So certain things like shakes, smoothies, uh, and wine can be had, but they are more of a um, sparingly uh, type thing that you wanna have. You know, there are some that actually can be quite healthy, like raw cabbage juice is actually super healthy for you, but it tastes gross and most people aren't going to Jamba Juice uh, or Smoothie King for raw cabbage juice, you know what I mean? So most people are going for that liquid and sugar and that's really what we wanna to try to minimize. Uh, avoid slash minimize. So again, we're not talking about cutting these out cold turkey, but you know, if you wanted a place to really try to boost your health and wellness, your recovery, your performance, uh, sleep, cravings, all these different things, these are gonna be the top foods that you really wanna to try to minimize slash avoid. So processed foods and fast foods, things like um, Snickers, McDonald's, uh, Burger King, you know, uh, you guys know the deal, Three Musketeers, all, Gatorade, all that, all that type of stuff. Uh, refined sugar and artificial sweeteners. So this is gonna be things like standard table sugar. Not only does it have no nutrients whatsoever, not only does it spike your blood sugar, not only is it addictive, not only is it inflammatory, but it actually robs your body of nutrients. It actually takes nutrients away from being utilized from your body. So it's really not good for you. Uh, sucralose, artificial sweeteners, um, you know, aspartame, things like that, those are really uh, quite bad for you. And I would very strongly uh, say that you should just avoid them at all costs. Uh, liquid carbs slash sugar, so Pepsi, beer, lemonade, um, you know, all of these things are essentially just liquid sugar, uh, much more so than even the, the shakes and the smoothies that I was talking about before. Yes, those have some uh, sugar in them, but they also have some fiber and some nutrients. Meanwhile, these are just like completely devoid of any nutrients whatsoever and are literally just pure sugar. And then lastly, gluten-based grains and refined flours. So uh, wheat, barley, and rye are gonna be your main gluten-containing grains, and then refined flours, um, you know, things that make uh, pizza, bagels, Wonder Bread, so on and so forth. These things are not gonna be conducive to health. So while it is true that carbs can be um, not so great for you, it's also true about certain fats that can be not so great for you, but we don't throw out fats completely by saying, well, some can be bad for you, right? So it's the same thing here. There are certain ones we wanna avoid slash minimize, there's certain ones that are okay, and there's certain ones that tend to be best that you wanna to try to maximize as much as possible. So hopefully now you have a sense that all carbs are not created equal and that there's certain ones that are better than others. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We'll see you next time.